Noel Edmonds, uh, what do you reckon is the notional value of the BBC if it, it can be bought? I have absolutely no idea, Jeremy. Good evening. Uh, the problem about evaluation is that the actual components of the BBC are changing uh, almost by the week. Uh, so I've got no idea what it is. We have run some models on what the BBC would be worth today, what it would be worth at the end of, say, the next round of cuts, and what it could be worth on the open market. And those figures roughly are what? Uh, I'm not going to say at this particular time for obvious business reasons. So you have got, when you say we, you have got a consortium of people together, have you? Yes. Um, Project Wreath, as we call it, predates everything that's recently happened for the BBC. By that I mean the Jimmy Savile scandal, the George Entwistle in for 60 days or whatever it was, the matter of the executive pay outside of what people were entitled to, attacks by uh, eminent broadcasters on the BBC, yourself included. And of course the announcement that BBC Three is going to be cut. The project actually started about 18 months ago. And uh, who are these people? Like-minded people, people who actually do not want to see Britain lose the BBC, and that well, is how serious it is. The yeah, BBC. But who are they? I mean, like-minded people. What a lot of, with the greatest of respect, lots of blokes with beards who present afternoon television programmes. What is it? This, these like-minded people. Jeremy, I'm obviously not going to talk about the uh, components of this particular project in that kind of detail. Well, there will be <laughs> the right time to do that, yeah. but we believe that the BBC is sleepwalking its way to destruction and the BBC will be lost to Britain. And we do not think that that uh, is right. Well, Mr Blobby's the man to save it. Well, Jeremy, uh, I like the little extras that you're throwing into this, but the situation is very, very serious. As you yourself have said, John Humphreys said in the last 48 hours, this is a really serious situation where the BBC, because of its triple problems of the way in which it's been funded, right. historic baggage, and the way in which it's used as a political football, its future, its very future, is in doubt. Yeah, well, look, what would it be like under your consortium? What would the BBC do that it doesn't do now or not do that it does do now? I doubt you've got the time for me to go into the kind of detail that quite clearly you want, but you've got to look at where the BBC is currently going to try and imagine how you would make it fit for purpose. It's not fit for purpose in the Apple age, the age of Microsoft, the age of very large businesses that would love to pick over the carcass of the BBC. As quite clearly the BBC is slowly recognising, it's the wrong shape. So, okay, all right, so it, what would you cut? Uh, I'm not going to say what we are going to cut, because we don't know what is going to be left. I mean, is BBC Four going to go in a moment? Are we going to lose the two uh, children's channels? What I would say is that because of the historic baggage, We've got a ridiculous situation where the licence fee now covers the World Service. Most people in Britain don't even know how to get the World Service. There are 50,000 people speaking Gaelic. Welsh language has been declining over 10 years and the BBC spends £48 million on that. Clearly, you've got to look at making the BBC relevant to the internet age. Right, so there's bad news for the Welsh. Uh, what about what about orchestras? No, no, it's orchestras. not bad news. No, that's that, that's not true because they still would have Welsh services as Scotland would. It's the extra things that most people these days can get online, and the BBC, frankly, if it owned up to it, is lumbered with it. They don't want to be paying for the world service. I have massive love and respect for the BBC, but the problem is it doesn't have enough control over its own future. It is a patient that is now terminally ill and it needs another force from outside to cure it and make it fit for a world that we couldn't have envisaged 10 years ago. Uh, Jeremy, 10 years ago we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have Netflix breaking new programming. We didn't have iPads and things. The way in which we will get the BBC in 10 years time, if it was, Please, it doesn't happen, but it does get an extension of the Royal Charter. All right, we we okay. will be getting our entertainment, information and education in a totally different way. And the BBC has got to be configured to be able uh, to clearly, do that. Clearly, that, ha has to, to, that clearly has to happen. There has to be a huge change. But 
please don't be as secretive about this as you've been about investors and programme plans and the rest of it. Are you currently paying the television licence fee? I don't have a TV licence, no. Was that because you don't have a television? Uh, I don't watch, uh, except on catch-up. OK. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers.